Because what's bugging Micah gets results. Thank you, Joe Rowling, 41 of Scotland. This is MuggleCast episode 56 for September 17th, 2006. CYGoDaddy.com is the number one domain registrar worldwide. Now with your domain name registration, you'll get hosting, a free blog, complete email, and much more. Plus, as a MuggleCast listener, enter code RON, that's R-O-N, when you check out and get your .com domain name for just six ninety five a year. Get your piece of the internet today at GoDaddy.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm Andrew Sims. I'm Bichon. I'm Laura Thompson. I'm Jim Lines. Welcome to Annabelle. We got a great show for you this week. Before we go anywhere else, Mike Tainbaum, St. Mine, and Michael Cassidy, and Sarah with Pesach, Stop Harry Potter News Stories. Last week, we reported that the Daily Mirror spoke to J.K. Rowling at a tea party in Edinburgh, celebrating the release of driving lessons. Regarding the progress of Book 7, the UK tabloid quoted Joe as saying, I'm up to 750 pages now. At the time, we told you it was highly unlikely Joe would give away how many pages she's written. Now we have confirmation in the form of an update to the rubbish bin at jkrowling.com. She said, I haven't written 750 pages of book 7, and if I had, I'd be very worried as I'm not close to finishing it yet. I was at the tea party for driving lessons, though, so this isn't pure fiction. The journalist reports that I said that Rupert is absolutely terrific in the film. He is, so that bit shouldn't be in the rubbish bin at all. Speaking of updates, clearly thanks to my rant on last week's show, J.K. Rowling has added a new diary, news, and extra stuff entry to her official site. In her diary, she apologizes for the lack of updates recently and talks about her experience in New York for an evening with Harry, Carrie, and Garp. Also, an NAQ never asked question was added to the extra stuff section. Why did Dumbledore have James's invisibility cloak at the time of James's death, given that Dumbledore can make himself invisible without a cloak? We discuss that later in the show. The National Library of Scotland has obtained a $3.35 million grant in order to establish a digital repository to include blogs, journals, and emails written by leading Scots, J.K. Rowling among them. The digital works exhibited will all be of cultural significance and are set to be unveiled in 2008. The Harry Potter box set containing Quidditch Through the Ages and Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, published in support of Comic Relief, now has a brand new cover. And finally, Bloomsbury will re-release 21 books to celebrate their 21st birthday, including Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. According to publishing news, all the titles will feature a short question and answer with the authors, an introduction by fellow writers, and a reading guide. No word yet on what Joe may include. That's all the news for the September 17th, 2006 edition of MuggleCast. Back to the show. Okay. Thank you, Micah. Oh, I'm here this week. Sorry. Um, yeah, you are here. So, so you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Micah, we are so proud of you this week. I speak for the Harry Potter Yay! community when I say we are so proud of you this week. What I, think, I do. But we'll get to that I think in a minute. We're proud and excited to be fair. We are. <laughs> we are excited as well. I'd agree. Let's have a few announcements first. Do not forget, vote for us on Podcast Alley. And uh PO uh, Box update, Ben. You got oh a my Box gosh. For us? Oh jeez. We have more Quickly. letters than you can imagine. Thanks to uh who is this here? Thanks to Harley Hoover from Pen- Peninsula, Ohio, for sending us pickles. Paper pickles with each of our names on them. That's very, very Aww, kind of you. Thank you. We got some letters here from oh, no, wait a second. Alexis. Wait a second. Wait a second. What? Pickle, 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 pickle. All right, okay. go ahead. We have letters here from Alexis, from Liz Jaffe. Jaffe. Uh, this person, I don't know. They're from Oklahoma, but that's all I know about them. Um, oh, thanks well, to uh, Miss <laughs> Ronak Ch- Chaduri for sending me a. Uh, Subway gift card. Thanks to uh, Claire Fuller for sending in a letter. Someone else made pickle hats for us. Ooh. Uh, the, Are you going to bring all this, this pickle stuff? No, Merch- keep memorabilia, it to his merchandise. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, okay. Thanks to uh, Leslie McGee for sending in us a CD. I think this is. Yeah, CD. Um, then the pickle hats came from Jordana. From Illinois. Ooh. Like, these are hats like you wear on your head. Like, they're paper hats. They're kind of neat. Oh, cool. And yeah, and then another letter came from Alex from uh, New Hampshire. So, yeah, there's oh, a bringing these to California, California then, really? You bring them. Huh? The pickle you hats? Do you really want your yeah, pickle hats? Of course yes. I want my pickle hats. I guess. Leaky Mug, live in California, September 28th. It's going to be a fabulous... A blast. A blast. It's going to be a yeah. blast. A big event. Don't forget to RSVP on leakymug.com. We got about what 300. Is RSP? Sorry, what does RSVP stand for? Rassonde s'il vous plaît. 
Rapunze Silver Plate. Not bad, Ben. You get 8 out of 10 for effort. We have like 300 to 400 RSVPs already, so it's going to be a big event. Um, and make sure you get there early because Borders is limiting it to 400 people and it's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, And also join the Facebook event group because um, cool people just do Just for that. the fun of it. Just for the fun of yeah. it. Yeah. Listener rebuttals this week. Jessica23 23 from Ohio uh, has a rebuttal about Give Me a Butterbeer from episode 55. Oh, she, she wants writes, to have a go, does she? A comment was made, I'm not sure by who, about how the Harry Potter books do not convert their readers to Wicca. While I completely agree that Harry Potter does not encourage people to alter their religious beliefs in any way, I felt compelled to point out that HP does not relate to Wicca in any way. While it's true that followers of Wicca are sometimes referred to as witches, Wicca is a valid religion that has absolutely nothing to do with things like flying broomsticks and magic wands. Just wanted to make that distinction. Love your show. Keep up the good work. Yeah, it's it's important it's to say it's that it, Wicca is yeah. not an evil religion at all. Yeah, but when... I mean, I can't really remember it, but weren't you just pointing out that it it's a religion and you, you should really separate Harry Potter and religion completely because, you know, once you start mm-hmm. mixing them, you just get into all the stuff about, you know, evil and stuff like that. It's just like, I just think it should be just kept completely separate. You know, it's a book series. Well, it's yeah. Faux really show. Religion. Faux show, man. But just check on Wikipedia and type in <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> okay, our second one is from Elena, 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 who is 16 from East LA. Hope you'll be coming to the podcast. And the subject is Dumbledore and Voldemort's power. Regarding your discussion about if Dumbledore and Voldemort are just generally more powerful than the rest of the... And I can't read it because my aim has just popped up a... Somebody has signed off. Um, (laughs) Are just generally more powerful than the rest of the world and why that is. Isn't it possible that they are just equivalent to what geniuses are in the muggle world, but with their magical ability? Like there are some people who are just regular, some who are smart, and some who are super intelligent or geniuses. The same can go for the magical world. Though people can't be more magical than others, they can possess different levels in talent in magic, as in the muggle world with intelligence. And this talent possibly follows the same laws as intelligence does with the nature-nurture theories. Great show. Peace out. Um, So, I guess she's kind of saying that Voldemort and Dumbledore are the Einsteins of the uh, magical world, or the Leonardo da Vinci's or something. Definitely. I think that's pretty true. Erica, 24 of Chicago, writes about Harry Potter and the Star Wars connection that Jamie brought up last week. Jamie only mentioned this briefly, but I think it was genius to make a connection between the levels of power in HP characters and the main players in Star Wars. I mean, that's not a muggle line or anything. He thought of that all by himself. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, wait a minute. Okay, Ben. Okay, I don't think I did. I didn't. I, th- I did think of that myself. I didn't get it off the site. Dumbledore is the equivalent of Obi-Wan Kenobi, a learned master, a combination of great skill and experience and age. I'd pick him versus Yoda because Vader was an Obi-Wan student. Voldemort is the equivalent of Darth Vader, an orphaned child prodigy with exceptional natural ability turned, quote, less than human evil lord who passes on some of his power to the one who will have to defeat him. Harry's definitely the Luke Skywalker. He inherited some exceptional abilities by being a by being marked by Voldemort. So, if we follow the pattern in Harry Potter, the masters of the Force, whether good or evil, are light years away ahead of the rest of the Jedi in their ability. Luke never became a Jedi Master, and he was able to defeat Vader in the same way that Harry, while he is more skilled or powerful than average wizards his age, does not have to become as powerful as Voldemort to defeat him. He only has to skillfully use what he knows. And even though there are some similarities, please don't think I would ever suggest that Voldemort and Harry will share a Luke, I am your father moment, but maybe that would be a crackpot theory. Yeah, next week's one for Eric. Uh, but like, it could be like, um, you know, as she says, it. It's just one thing that uh, Harry's got to tap into, like love. You know, I mean, it's. It could be that love isn't especially powerful, but it's just the one thing that Voldemort can't stand, and that one thing is, you know, his weakness, and he just has to tap into that power or something and use that against him. This is from Carolyn, nineteen, from Connecticut. Uh, in episode 55, you were discussing Dumbledore and Voldemort's magical powers. You mentioned that you thought that Dumbledore cast the Fidelius charm on the Potters because it is described as immensely complex magic. However, we knew that Dumbledore gave evidence that Sirius was the Potter's secret keeper, and if Dumbledore was the one that cast the char- charm, wouldn't he know that Wormtable, sorry, that Wormtail was the secret keeper? Love the show, Carolyn. Um... Yeah, she's right. <laughs> yeah, she's right. We got rebuttals. <laughs> we got a lot of rebuttals like that. So, um, so, so that's more of a correction. To sum things up, we were wrong. Sorry, Good I job, was wrong. Guys. You were wrong. <laughs> I was wrong, yeah. Oh, come on. 
Please not spread the blame around, blame around slightly. I wasn't we there, wrong. so you, you can't blame me. You were I wasn't still there wrong, either, so I think. <laughs> okay, both of you were wrong. It was wrong, just me, Ben, so. and Eric. No, I wasn't. Or no, me, Jamie, and Eric. Yeah. Let's blame Eric because he's not here to defend himself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Eric, I it was <laughs> clearly that uh, Sirius was the positive yeah. secret keeper. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, it was. <laughs> okay, I screwed up again. Whatever Carolyn says. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, well that wraps up listener rebuttals. Sweet um, Caroline, sorry. Well, <laughs> last week on episode fifty-five, we premiered a brand new segment. What's bugging, Micah? And coincidentally, Micah, this is pure coincidence. J.K. Rowling on Thursday, September third, no Wednesday, September thirteenth, updated her website with lots of updates. Just a mere, a mere four days after What's Bugging, Micah premiered. Where Micah flipped out on J.K. Rowling for not updating her website. And you think this Ma- is a coincidence, Andrew? I'm just kidding. I just didn't want to be modest. <laughs> no, I just wanted to be modest. <laughs> yeah. Micah, I what do you so, think about this? It was, Are you it was convinced? Long, it was long due. It was yeah, due. It was, it, so, I don't know. Let's just pretend like it was Micah <laughs> and that Joe does listen to the show. Well, here, we have a little test here. Let's uh, have Micah... Ask for a million Gripe about the title and see if it... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good, Micah, go for it. What Micah do you want me say, to do? Just say... Say, Micah... I mean, say, Joe, Joe she never gives give us the us. title. Yeah, yeah. Do it. And do it. she gives it in the next couple of <laughs> yeah. days. Okay, okay. That'll be a pr- yeah. pretty big Joe. coincidence. Here, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, wait, wait. You've got to meet now it from Now it's time the for the though. second installment of What's no. Bugging Micah. <laughs> Micah, go. Micah, meet it from the heart. There's nothing bugging me right now, though, but... No, this is bugging you. You told me about it earlier. Go ahead. Joe, you must reveal the title of book seven by Halloween. <laughs> okay. You heard it here. Did fight. that come from the heart, Mike, or are you just... Uh... Well, it was th- funny, though, on the news post we made on MuggleNet.com, if you look through the comments, <laughs> a lot of people say... <laughs> yeah, they all like thought this it was one. my uh, yeah. doing. <laughs> hey, Micah, that rant of yours worked. Uh, it, was, it, it, was, it was pretty funny. Another one says, finally, she must have listened to MuggleCast. <laughs> so, <laughs> coincidence... Probably really good timing, yes. <laughs> however, yeah, come on. Very however, good timing, though. Very. Good however, timing. of course, Joe listens. This is, you know, this is her thing. She wants to hear us discuss. Didn't she tell us that uh, that when she goes jogging in the uh, morning, she uh, with her iPod, plugs her iPod in, yeah, and just turns the show on. Actually, guys, I think that she actually dropped us a hint on her site. What you do? Where? Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> If you um you go on you know jkrowling.com you look at you look at her diary, she says sorry five times. How many letters are in Micah's first name? Five. 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 Two, three. How many times does she say sorry? <laughs> five. Five. <laughs> huh? See the connection? <laughs> yeah. <God>. Okay. <laughs> We've been doing this way too long, Andrew. She dropped a hint. <laughs> that is there a pretty go. big hint. It's a pretty. It is. I tried finding other Anvil ones, but I could. <laughs> that was the best one. <laughs> Um, so anyway, that was very good. And a lot of people liked that segment last week, Micah, so... Should we change work. it? What's bugging Micah gets results. Should Ding. we change the, uh, Chuck Norris Dumbledore quotes to Micah quotes now? Because he's pretty, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's pretty powerful. <laughs> so anyway, this leads us into our main discussion this week, which is, um, about an update that Joe made on her site. Jamie. Okay, this is taken straight from uh, her site. Why did Dumbledore have James's invisibility cloak at the time of James's death? Given that Dumbledore could make himself invisible anyway, does he really need it? Prior to posting this, I had a quick look online and realized that some fans have been speculating about this question. Uh, that's Joe, by the way, not me. <laughs> <laughs> However, nobody has, has ever asked me about it, and they really should have done. Just to allay the fears of the justifiably suspicious, this isn't what we in the know call a Mark Evans situation, as in that it's, you know, we think it's massive, but it's not. There is a significant, even crucial answer to this question. So, our main discussion this week is, why did Dumbledore have James's invisibility cloak on him at the time of James's death? Go. Oh, geez, this is nothing but pure conjecture. Our questions for this, our first one is, uh, number one, is this simply that Dumbledore couldn't make himself invisible at this time? Some people f- forget that Dumbledore was not ridiculously powerful from birth, although it seems like he has always been one step ahead, e.g. when Professor Tofty said that during his Newt examinations he could do things with a wand that you know nobody has ever seen before. His <laughs> magical abilities are clearly a product of age and experience. Oh, What's so funny about that? so gross. You guys Grow are up. so perverted. Um, Grow up. So, I'm sure. Do you think Gosh. that's the case? I don't think so, because this was only 
12, 13, however many years it was prior. And it's not like Dumbledore developed all his skills in that, not 12, 13, 15, 16 years. How do you know, Andrew? How do you know? Because he was the how do you Hogwarts. know, Andrew? Be- <laughs> because that- he was there after <laughs> Harry died and... Uh... <laughs> Harry didn't die. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean... <laughs> no, oh, really? Oh, shoot. <laughs> Digging a grave here, Andrew. It's getting bigger I mean, and James bigger and, and bigger. Lily died. James and Lily died. Uh, I guess so. You're still wrong. Are no, you wrong? no Are you I think, I think that Dumbledore think? was probably able to become invisible on his own. I'm I don't think he would have... Um, I'm just going to ask. Yeah, the, okay, J.K. Rowling said it's significant. What significance would that hold? Just that he didn't know how to become invisible on his own then. Right? Yeah, that I don't think that that would hold any great key to the series. So we've established Andrew's wrong, once again, but <laughs> anybody no, have any bright ideas? No, I think we just no, we established didn't. that Andrew was right. I'm just saying Dumbledore, <laughs> Dumbledore didn't develop all his skills after Harry's birth. He had them before. Yeah, Harry's birth. so he he's he's an old how guy. How do you know that? Okay, he he is an old guy, but he I don't know just, that. But he, he was the headmaster of Hogwarts. But he could have re- read. Well, that doesn't book, really you know becoming invisible without a cloak just in those fifteen years. You don't know that he learned. Yeah, that, but you know, didn't Dumbledore tell Harry whenever he was um, looking into the mirror of Eris said that I have my own ways oh, yeah, of becoming invisible? Yeah, but yeah, but that's after. That's a long way after. Um, yeah, but. It just seems like the way he talks about it, he's it does, been doing it, it for a while, it and that he's accomplished at it. So he has his own ways of becoming invisible. He puts the cloak on. That's his way of becoming invisible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he sews it into his skin, and he can turn it on and off by, uh, you know, just thinking it or something. Let's go on to our second question. Did James purposely give the cloak to Dumbledore? Perhaps he knew that Dumbledore would give it to Harry, or that his death was imminent. Ben, what do you think? I think, of course, Dumbl- James intentionally gave it to Dumbledore. I, I don't think Dumbledore would steal it from him. So, well, well, I didn't mean that. I meant he, let, you know, if he found it after his death or something. Well, then the note that Dumbledore left to Harry, he said that your father left me left this with me shortly before he he died. Right? Isn't that what that I said? is very true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know why why he would give it to Dumbledore. Well, we've talked about this before, and I think the consensus we came to on that episode was that he. Left we it with Dumbledore for. Well, we sometimes we do. <laughs> rarely, rarely we do. And in this case, yeah. we decided that D- that James left the cloak with Dumbledore because he knew that Dumbledore would give it to Harry. But it seems like there's got to be something a little more prominent going on there, seeing as it's a crucial clue. Yeah. Or a bit of information. That's true. Well, look, let's go on to the third question, which is kind of redundant now. If he didn't purposely give it to him, where was the cloak after the death of the Potters? With Dumbledore, because he said he okay, left it. To okay, him okay, okay, fair enough. Question four. <laughs> Question four. Did Dumbledore go to Godric's Hollow and get the cloak? Um. Well, it, I mean, it it all depends on whether James gave it to Dumbledore before or after the Fidelius charm was performed, because obviously Dumbledore didn't do it. So, but um, how if, far? Sorry. Well, if if Dumbledore didn't perform the charm and he wasn't the secret keeper, he couldn't find the Potters, so James would have had to have given it to him prior to going into hiding. That is true. But how long before they died did was the charm performed? Do we know? Well, no. only a couple of weeks. They said that um, right. within two weeks of it being performed, Voldemort found him and uh, killed yeah. him. But, um, I mean, obviously we know it had to have been sometime in that year that Harry was born because he was only yeah, a year yeah. old whenever Voldemort attacked them. So it couldn't have been that far in advance. Do you think he gave it to him with, like, all of his other possessions? Or do you think he he, he sort of sat him down and said, I'm giving you this cloak because, you know... Because it's special, and uh, you need to do something sp- specific with it. I think. I think. Well, it's I don't think one. he intended for him to leave it to Harry because I don't think that Why that would have been his intentions. Well, because Dumbledore just said it is time that it is returned to you, didn't he? He he didn't specifically say your father gave this to me to leave to you. Right, because yeah. why? But no, why would James predict that if if they were going to be killed, that his son would make it through? That's yeah. The thing. Because no parent oh, ever yeah. wants to imagine that their child's going to die. They're going to want to leave options just in case their kid doesn't lives. He? He, he brings up a fair point, but... Yeah, but I do mean, you know, do you know any parent that's going to say, well, you're absolutely going to die, so there's no point in making plans yes, for you because yes. you're going to be dead? Well, they're not necessarily making plans. I mean, Why would James give it over in the first place? Why does he have to assume that he's going to be the one no, dying? No, 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 but the odds there, he think if Voldemort... He didn't realize that... Lily's love was in place, so he thought that if Voldemort can kill me, who, you know, is clearly a pretty advanced wizard, he isn't going to have any trouble 
with a small baby boy. So perhaps you gave it to him for, you know, maybe it is a Horcrux, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> well, why... I, okay, if we think about it, it I'm, what I'm trying to say is perhaps James gave Dumbledore the, the cloak for a reason other than to give to Harry give later to on Harry. for his own oh, he personal He probably usage. did. No, of course he did, because he couldn't have envisaged that Harry w- was going to live... Even though in his in you know in in his soul in his heart he must have absolutely begged him to live he had to think about you know of the, course I mean who wants their kid to die yeah and but or perhaps he gave it to Dumbledore to cover Harry I, I, cover you, Harry you know, with I don't know. with the cloak yeah yeah and take him somewhere or something because <laughs> you know <laughs> I doubt yeah, that, like that's that's normally the book seven huh? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's enormously significant the book seven. I'd laugh if it was Ben, because I wouldn't, I would not ever let you live that down. I just don't see how the cloak could, unless there's, unless there's something more to the cloak, and no, don't say Horcrux. Well, can he use the cloak to go through the veil? No. I don't think so. Why would the cloak do to? I don't know, I'm just throwing out a crazy theory. Because the veil wouldn't think that anyone was there. Uh, well, Well, perhaps, perhaps there, okay. Hold on, perhaps there are some properties to the invisibility cloak that we don't know about. Perhaps, like, and we're trying to say is... It's perhaps well, it, makes, yeah. it does more than make you invisible. Like, there's something else that it does for you. Like what? Well, we know that they're really the rare. So there's got to ah, be something I'll give you ten points if you can tell me which creature you can spin hair from to turn into invisibility cloaks. Um, Begins with a D. Demi, guys? Very good, very good. Yay. You get ten points, so it's pointless, oh. really. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do with ten points? It's like Nothing. whose line is it anyway? Beat, the point beat leaky in a <laughs> trivia contest. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, now I want to look this animal up and see if there's any special... Like, you would think that if there is going to be some amazing revelation about the invisibility cloak, there would have been some foreshadowing in the books already. Like, well, Harry noticed that when he wore the cloak, he it. could not, uh, spell deflect it off of him. I know, I no, but she's not going to do that. She's going to make subtle things. She's going oh, to right. make subtle insinuations. I know, it would be in passing. Yeah, like remember? Do you remember the way that it? Do you remember the way that it was described? Like it felt light as air, yet when it f- like flowed over his fingers, it felt like water. It, he said it felt like liquid air. So clearly, there's something just really bizarre about this thing because it's not just fabric. I mean, it makes you invisible. That's pretty uh, bizarre already. <laughs> yeah, and she just the way she described it kind of played it up to be something even more special. Yeah. Oh, I think it is more special, but. Well, that was sort of that was getting somewhere. It seemed like. Um, what if Harry or what if James had given it to Dumbledore for Dumbledore to give it to an Order member? Because maybe James would have thought that an Order member had a yeah. more important use for it than James. That isn't did. a very sort of crucial answer, though. That's pretty general. But why wouldn't James give it to that Order member then? Because an Order yeah. member might have needed a had a better reason to use it than James did. Maybe. No, but why wouldn't... No, I'm saying if Dumbledore James wanted to give it to, it to an order member, why wouldn't James have just given it because to Because maybe, depending on the situation... Who who knows what was going on then with the order when all that was happening. They could have been all spread out across all of England or whatever, and um, maybe James just couldn't directly deliver it to him, and Dumbledore was going to see him for they coffee. They magic. No, but... <laughs> they have what, elves. What I think we're missing here <laughs> is safe, that... Though. Is that he? That the I think the reason why James gave it to Dumbledore is a thing that's significant. Yeah. Not that what the cloak. Oh yeah, used definitely. For, yeah. You know. Well, no, it could. Yeah, but it could be like he gave it. But to I know, him but I'm not saying that we can. Somewhere. We should expect. Oh, in book seven, Ginny's going oh, to yeah, get yeah, alive yeah. using okay, the invisibility but cloak. It's, how rare are they? Because he could have just given it to him because it's you know it's a rare thing. He's got to, you know. It's something valuable, which is clearly going to come in useful at some point. Seems strange. Didn't um, Moody have two of them? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah but, but then he was had all sorts one, of that? he had all sorts of dark arts yeah. things that he just no one else had. For the... Well, it could be a possibility that the invisibility invisibility cloak is that particular one is enchanted somehow because even though they're rare, I don't, I don't think they all share the same properties. It's a two-way invisibility cloak. He 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 can use it to talk to James from beyond the grave. Is it possible? We know that wands have different powers depending on what kind of animal their magical core came from. So, say the demi guys that Harry's cloak was woven from had some sort of weird power. Wouldn't that make it more unique? Yeah. Than the others. Yeah. I think she just likes messing around with us. 
That's what I think. She put this out there. If you think about it, what did she really tell us on the site? See, now you're going to get me angry again. She didn't do anything <laughs> of significance. Nothing of that site was of any yes, significance. Yes, because she wants us to speculate about right. it. She's trying to bring attention She's to it. She's got to keep it. the fandom going. She, she, she realizes this book is taking yeah, a while. Yeah, because Harry Potter's dying, <laughs> it isn't is. it? It is. No, I'm saying... I bet she doesn't have enough money, so she needs... <laughs> <laughs> More no, what I'm saying is she likes to see the community <laughs> active like this, so she throws this stuff out there every once in a while to get everyone going and get everyone excited. Watch, it was just a birthday present. That's all it's going to turn out to be. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Oh yeah, the most How significant birthday significant? present. And, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing. She says it's not another Mark Evans situation. Yeah, exactly. Well, where do you think where do you think James got the cloak from in the first place? Do you think it was a family heirloom or wasn't it? Or do we know? I've I don't read too know much fan fiction. I've confused the heck out of myself. I think a lot of people have assumed that it's a family heirloom, but I'm not sure that it was ever I don't think specified you could go and buy that it was. Them, can you though? Can you, I mean, can you just go and buy them? Well, yeah, that's why Are it they... would make sense that it was something passed down through the family. Yeah, but... well, exactly, but are they rare in that you see them in shops, but they're, you know, I don't think we've ever very expensive. Or I don't think we've ever seen one in a shop. Uh, and you would think that if you could get one, you could get it in like Nocturne Alley, but I don't think we've yeah, ever yeah, seen one yeah. there. Well, yeah, of course they have to be very expensive, evil, or otherwise everyone would have them. No, because they could be rare, as in, as in, um, you can't even know, buy them. Some, I mean, some type it's of not animal. something yeah, you can yeah, really you buy. But, buy but, them. but guys, if if they're going to be rare, then they would be very expensive. No, because, to acquire no, because one. they could command high prices, but. You just can't buy them. What if it's something that you have to get because of something you do? Like, for instance, Moody has it because he's an Auror, or he was an Auror. What if, I mean, we don't know much about Lily's and James's occupations. Um, I've always kind of wondered what Lily's was because um, Joe said that James didn't really need to have any kind of high-paying job because he had plenty of gold. So I was always under the assumption that Lily did something a little more important, and maybe it was hers. Well, what do you guys think it was that, assuming that invisibility cloaks are given out because of an important job, do you think that maybe Lily did something important within the ministry? Like, maybe she was an unspeakable in the Department of Mysteries? Who, Lily? Ooh. Yeah. A bode or a croaker. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> but how would she have <laughs> inherited the cloak? Like, you were saying that she had a more respectable job than James did. Well, I'm saying what did that James the, the only people we've ever seen in... Well, I think the only other person we've seen in the books who has a cloak is Moody. And he's an Auror, so isn't it pretty it safe been, to yeah. assume that you only get those cloaks based on some kind of important occupation? Mm. Yeah, no, I think it's based on need, though, more than how important your job is. You know, like Well, obviously, if you're doing something like... And stuff. Like, if you're an Auror, or if you're an Unspeakable, you're obviously going to need forms of protection, yeah, an invisibility yeah, yeah. cloak could offer some form of protection. That so. is true. But yeah. then it got Jam in James's hands. How? Lily just handed it over to him? Wouldn't she want to keep that for herself as sort of like a... Well, no, because once Voldemort's after you, you're screwed. It doesn't matter. I mean... But you would still want to keep it. Yeah, but what if there was some greater cause as to why Dumbledore needed it? That's the thing. I think that Lily would sacrifice that. I'm just looking at the way that she worded the question, because she never words things the wrong way. And she says, at the time of James's death, she, she, she doesn't bring up Lily. She specifically refers to James. And I, I don't know. It's almost like she's saying, why did he have it at that exact moment? So you almost think that he was there when it happened. Whoa, whoa, Mike Tannenbaum, I love you. <laughs> um, uh, hold, but seriously, though, th it's important that... Oh, okay, at the time of James' death, wouldn't she say the Potter's death? You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's usually yeah. what's referred to as. I don't think mm -hmm. Lily's alive, if that's what you're trying to say. No, I'm not. Uh... Well, you think you think it'd be possible that Dumbledore was in Godric's Hollow that night? That's – I've been kind of wondering about that. No, but you, you think – what would he stand idly by and watch him be killed, though? That's, I don't like know. Like he's holding the invisibility cloak in one hand like <laughs> with a weird expression on his face. <laughs> Oops. Well, hey, that, there's still something about that odd twinkle to Dumbledore's eye at the end of Goblet of Fire when he found out that Voldemort had Harry's blood. What if he's evil? <laughs> no. <laughs> Where's Rachel? <laughs> what if he was evil? <laughs> No, but also the other thing that kind of debunks the Lily 
idea is that she refers to it as James's invisibility cloak. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, that's too. And and if it was Lily's invisibility cloak, why would James give it to Dumbledore? You know. Well, well, he could have told him to give it. Yeah. Told him to give it. <laughs> Do you want to? Um... I know, but if it's something that's her personal so, possession, so he was whipped. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yes, I. She I just did that. everything that. Lily told yep. him to do. Just like I think Harry's <laughs> whipped by Ginny, so... Oh, yeah, he is. <laughs> she sorts him out. She sorts him out. Do you want to read uh, a theory off of COS forums? Maybe get this going a little bit more. This goes a little deeper, further than what we've been saying, but... Um, this was posted on COS forums by Eli, Eli C. A first year. Um... He quotes Sorcerer Stone. Your father left this in my possession before he died. It is time it was returned to you. Use it well. A very Merry Christmas to you. And Eli says, The cloak was probably left unintentionally with Dumbledore by James. I say this because Dumbledore did not say, quote, He gave this to me to use, end quote, for whatever purpose. Instead, James mistakenly left it. Thus, the left this in my possession. We can theorize that Dumbledore did not have it intentionally, and there is a strong pass- possibility that the cloak was being used by a member of the Order. My thought is that it was James... Keep reading for more on this. Dumbledore only had it in his possession for a short time when the Potters were killed. Otherwise, such an important object of protection would have been returned quickly, especially if they were in danger. Remember that although Dumbledore is at school with Harry, Dumbledore asked Harry to keep the cloak with him at all times. Oh, yes. But if that's How the case, do you then... forget an invisibility cloak? Hold on, there's more. I think James was secretly tailing Snape under the cloak the night Snape heard the prophecy, followed Snape, overheard the conversation between Snape and Lord Voldemort, in which Voldemort chooses Harry as the one. Snape, realizing what he's done, turns to Dumbledore, and at some point, James reveals himself either while Snape is with Dumbledore or right after he leaves. Remember that, remember that Snape knows that Harry and James's cloaks are one and the same. Uh, so it is probable that James revealed himself while Snape was with Dumbledore in conversation. During this conversation, or possibly possibly heated discussion, James sits down the cloak on a chair, discusses things with Dumbledore, and Snape rushes off to Godric's Hollow and his family to keep safe. Dumbledore finds Sirius to be a secret keeper, but then they choose Wormtail, cast the secret keeper charm, and the next day or so, James and Lily are killed. Snape did not know who the secret keeper for the Potters was, and therefore did not know that they would be killed. Besides, Death Eaters do not know each other per se. See book four, I believe. There's more, but... <laughs> Don't you think that if he could do that, I mean... If I had to be invisible, I'd want a way that Dumbledore chooses rather than a, a, a cloak, because it, it's quite a crude way of remaining invisible. You, you know, if there's a strong wind that <laughs> yeah. flaps up at the, 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 the bottom, right. then you're going to see your feet. Or if it just, you, you know, it just seems it's, it's, it is very crude. Or if you trip over and it flies or off. Or footsteps. You, know. you can hear footsteps, too. It's not a, Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's not the safest. Yeah, but yeah. It just, it just seems very crude. That's an interesting theory, though. Well, hold on. Do you think do you think that it's a case that Dumbledore needed to use the invisibility cloak? No. Because perhaps I don't know. Never mind. No, say it, Ben. Well, as I say, maybe the Dumbledore's invisibility, like that, he can do by himself. Never mind. Just say it. <laughs> just say it. No I, theory I, is safe. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying <laughs> that. Uh, the invisibility cloak has to have something special about it for Dumbledore to use it over his own invisibility. There. Yeah. Thank me, Captain yeah. Obvious. Well, if you're wondering why there's a lack of more discussion, that's because we're recording this on the same day that the news broke. So um, we were a little tight for time and planning more of a thought-out discussion. We're also quite tired. We are, we are quite well. tired. It's <laughs> 9.21 here on the East Coast. Ugh. Oh, well, you know. It's 9.13. You're so full It's 9.22, Laura. My Mac it's is synced with the U.S. government time zones. It can't be wrong. <laughs> 9.13? Yeah. Is everyone slow There's in Georgia? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> it's funny that you mm. should ask. Um, but if you have your own theories, feel free to send them in, and we'll probably discuss this more next week on... Uh... Oh, but shoot, we're recording early. Listen to this show on Sunday. Get them in by Sunday night. Uh, we're recording episode 57 much earlier next week. Get your theories in. I'm sure there will be some waiting in the MuggleCast email box, and... Um... We'll talk about it more on next week's Listener Rebuttals. Anyway, moving on. Just in time, right after Jamie says he's tired, it's time for Dumbledore and Chuck Norris facts. The book Lord of the Rings was revived from its original. The first one had Frodo taking the one ring to Dumbledore so <laughs> he could destroy it. Hey, Jamie, as a matter of fact, what? someone actually sent in a letter. Yeah? Like a letter that had some, some Dumbledore quotes on it. Oh, nice. 
Next. <laughs> Dumbledore, Dumbledore once used an engorgement charm on a small hill. That hill is now known as the Himalayan mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbledore performed the Agumenti charm only once. The result left 70% of the earth covered in water. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, I was going to say these are thanks to BD twenty seven from Alabama. Okay, <laughs> a basilisk is born uh, of a chicken's he- egg hatched beneath a toad, but Dumbledore was born of a dragon's egg hatched beneath a hippogriff. <laughs> that's a kind of uh, you know. <laughs> that'll do for today, okay. Andrew. Andrew, that's that'll do for plenty. Today. Now it's time for this week's voicemails. <laughs> Here's the first one from Amanda. Hi, this is Amanda from Wisconsin. I just wanted to say I love you guys' show, and I have a question. When you guys were talking about on your last episode that if Hogwarts was to close, um, they could be homeschooled, how would the um, students who are muggle-borns be taught because their parents, you know, don't do magic? So just wanted to see what you guys thought. So thanks, and I love you guys' show. Bye. Laura, you're a homeschooling expert. Tell us. Because you, you always stand by the – and I'm not trying to insult it or anything. I'm just saying you always well, stand by the – I think it's also also important to point out that I was forced to argue that point by the person who came up with this segment. Thank you, Ben. And um, what, while what segment I, is it? So the, are you admitting that segment. you have a substandard education, Laura? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that you can't really compare a muggle education to a wizarding education because any parent can teach you maths. However, any parent can't teach you wizarding. There would have to be some sort of... No, um, any parent supplement. can't teach you calculus. I'm sorry. No, if I'm saying tried, any My par- mom couldn't teach me basic ben, addition. Ben, I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying that any person, any person can study mathematics because it's a universal thing. Not any person I can't. can. St- Yes, I'm you can, Jay. No, you can't. You cannot study. No, you can yes, get to advanced levels, you can't. It. No, you can't. You have to have some no, instruction. No, you can study it. In books. Ben. It in doesn't books. mean you have to no, be a can't. genius at it. Okay, that's like saying you can read a book on how to fly a plane and you'll no, know how to fly a plane. That's that's no, that. it's not. It's not. No, that it, is completely it is, different. It's the same thing. Okay. No, it's not. How, you can't teach yourself calculus. Some people can. Okay, Laura. Someone had to invent calculus, Ben. Yeah. That's a silly statement. Shut up, Andrew. <laughs> no, what, what I think what Laura's saying is magic is completely different because there's a wand involved and there's a certain way you have to flick the wand and there's a certain, you know, you got to concentrate. But still the, same, and- the same, you have to go through another process. You have to go through a process with math, too. The thing is, though, that everyone can study math. Not everyone can study wizardry. So there is a difference between muggle studies. Okay, everyone can... No, no. We're going to become the same playing field. Everyone, can, Every wizard can study potions. Yeah, exactly. That's what we're saying. Yeah, yeah but not... Yes. Subjects. Yes, but we're not talking about homeschooling kids who have wizarding parents. We're talking about homeschooling kids who have muggle parents. What they I'm can saying still do is, it, though. If they've got the magical ability, they can do it. They can do it. They can teach themselves out of, out of a book. Sure, some people can read stuff, but not everyone is adept at teaching themselves. That's true. They're not. And so you would have to come up with some kind of system where you sent tutors. There are actually some homeschooling systems where kids go to pick up their work two or three times a week, and they meet with teachers and tutors, and they do their lessons, they bring it home, they do their work at home, and then they take it back for grading. Okay, if you we were don't need a to muggle do a whole parent, debate out would of you this. want to... No, I'm just no, curious. Would funny. you want to it's send your... Send your ch- your kid into a wizarding household where they're likely to be killed. Uh, if you're a muggle parent, would you want to send your child to a wizarding school where they're likely to be yeah, killed? Yeah, yeah, Snap, yeah. Ben. No, I'm saying it defeats it's the whole the purpose. Same thing. No, no, I'm saying it defeats the whole purpose of not sending them to Hogwarts. If no, you're it's going not to send that... them somewhere else to be homeschooled. You no, you don't have to send them to live with that person. They can use the flu network to get but Laura, to and from every but Laura, day. Do coming back to the voicemail, do your parents teach you, or do you no, do it all yourself? Okay, I do it well, by myself. Well, that means that a uh, a student, a uh, student who is muggle-born, sorry, a wizard who who is muggle-born could do it too. No, they can't. Sure, some because of them. No, you no, some no, of them can. Ben. Of course, they can, Ben. How how did you how did you learn the count to a hundred? Did you did you just one day wake up and say one two three four? But that's primary. That's that's kindergarten. That's kindergarten. No, that's very different, Ben. No, it's not. No, it's not. You have to have someone has to help you establish the base in order for you to be able to build upon it. I mean, if you don't have any base to build upon, then you're not going to be able to enhance your education. The point is, though, Ben, people learn those things at uh, primary school, whereas uh, 
stuff like magic. You know, it's like we see in Hogwarts. It's you need to you can you can't be taught how to hold your wand and wave it so something happens. You have to learn it from you know. You've got to learn it yourself. It's just, it's like juggling. It's just practice that does it. You know, yes. you can't. Somebody can't say to you, "Chuck one into the air, then move it across a bit, and then chuck the other one into the air, then catch it, then do this." You have to. Yes, learn they it. do. That's exactly what they do. Yes, but it's trial and yeah. error, Ben. I I know, but you have to have someone give you a push in the right direction. If you're a Muggle-born, like swish and flick. Look, you flick. We spend a lot of time teaching them just how to flick their wands the right way. You're not going to be able to figure. Imagine how long it's going to take you to figure that out on your on your own. I'm just saying. You, you will. It's written down. If it's written down, you can. Are you saying that because that because kids are homeschooled, they can't have teachers? Because that's not true. I have teachers. I can contact them via email. So there's no reason that if a student was having trouble, they couldn't write to their teacher. They couldn't write to the person who wrote their course material. Yeah, well, exactly. I'm, t- yeah, and- I'm tired of being right, guys. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> I think that you can you can learn math to a point, and that point might be... Pre cal, I could not do Kevin's right, math, right. man. It was the same it depends, thing. It you depends can, on, on your abilities. On. Yeah, you can learn magic to a point, but that point is basic, very basic magic. There comes the thing is because there there comes a point in learning, going through your Hogwarts career that you're or just your learning magical career that you will absolutely need uh, a teacher. The thing, there, there is the thing that some students can teach themselves independently all the time. Some students can't. And that is why if there was any kind of homeschooling program, I honestly, despite the debate last week, I don't find it feasible that Hogwarts would close down. I don't find it feasible that students would homeschool. I'm saying that it's not an impossibility. I'm saying that people, people could do no, it if yeah, exactly. there was some kind of conflict that made that that would allow for homeschooling to go on because it wouldn't be safe to be at Hogwarts it would have to be an alternative that people would take I just think that it's obvious that they can do it though because if you think Dumbledore and Voldemort couldn't have get couldn't have got couldn't have been taught what they've learned mm-hmm. over and above you know the basic stuff they had to learn it themselves by trial and error and it's only there by trial and error there was that you no can school it. and people well, exactly. had to have educated themselves on magic okay well there you go <laughs> This discussion could really go on forever. Hey, MuggleCast. This is Alexia from Seattle, and I was just rereading Goblet of Fire, and I was at the part where Moody's doing the Imperius curse, and Harry's good at resisting it, and um, he says, watch his eyes. That's where you see it. Very good, Potter. Very good indeed. I was just thinking maybe that's the power that Lily's eyes have at they're able to resist the Imperius curse because Lily fought Voldemort, you know, when he said step aside, he probably used the Imperius curse on her. So I was just wondering what you thought. Thanks. Bye. Well, yeah, that's why a lot of people thought that whole bit in Prisoner of Azkaban, the movie, was foreshadowing where... About Lily's eyes. Yeah, about how she could see people for what they really were. Well, what I think, I think the Imperius curse has a lot to do with your... your, your ability to have control over your actions. I don't know if it has any... I don't know if the eyes are as significant as... Yeah, but the eyes are the window to the soul, Ben. No, but you can just see it in the <laughs> eyes. It's just like a uh, reflection of what's happening inside. You, I don't think your eyes... Like, have you guys seen Minority Report, the film? Mm-hmm. Okay, when when Tom Cruise, if he was good at withstanding the Imperious Curse before he had his eyes changed, he's still going to be good at it afterwards. General. Yeah, yeah, he's still going to be good at it afterwards. His eyes aren't, aren't actually going to make any difference. Amen. Yeah. Michael, what do you think? Is there a connection, the, uh, is there a link between the soul and the person's eyes? Do you think there's a little little, uh, little uh, nerve that runs from the eye to your soul? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Doctors have proved it, in fact. No, what I think, I think that... I mean, if you look at someone's eyes, you can get... You can tell how they're I don't know, if you ever just, like, sit there and stare into someone's... Yeah, you can tell, like, their emotions, all those type of things. And, like, there's this girl at my school who I tell her she has the eyes of Satan because <laughs> she's, she's so evil. <laughs> Every day I see her, I tell her she's, she's the devil child because... Why? I don't know, I just look oh into her God. eyes and, like, her pupils are, like, smaller than most people's. Like, they're tiny and black and... Oh, oh well, that settles just... it. She's clearly... <laughs> She's clearly the, <laughs> the devil. The Antichrist, yeah. then, yeah. Well, Ben, if you told us that, we would have completely agreed See, with you. See, the devil's seen Mount High School as everything, Andrew. We have 
the smartest people. We have Satan. We have. It. <laughs> I see. No, Pass but you, you tell you tell everything about people like through their eyes. Not everything, but you know what I mean. Like you can tell about like how sweet their eyes are and how how compassionate they are and that type of thing. Did you try and chat chat that girl up, Ben? Yeah. With that line. Hey, uh. Actually, I sang Elton like John you. song. Sang Elton John <laughs> yeah. song. Too. Hey, by so the way, you're supposed to announce the uh, winner of that this week. Actually, I did choose the winner. Uh, well, let's do it then. Um, Micah, do you have to go now? Before we move on to our next uh, voicemail? Yeah. Micah, where are you going? Yeah, what are I you do. doing? You going to a Joe, Joe Rolling Listen to Me party? I actually have to go. I have to go speak to Joe oh. um, and thank her for updating oh. the site. She's meeting Micah underneath the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi to her for us, Micah. Hey. Yeah. 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 All right. See you, Micah. Bye, Micah. All right, guys. Micah Tannenbaum, everyone. Get, still get says, results. I know. Oh, I was, I was I make fun say, of you yet. I was going to say, Micah has friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ben, wait wait two seconds to do it, and then you can say it. Okay, sign right, off, ready? Micah, so I can talk no, crap on you. hanging up now. All right, go for it. Okay, okay. see you. Good. Are you serious? Micah's social. <laughs> <laughs> come Damn. on, come on. <laughs> Next voicemail. Hi, Michael Casters. This is Kathleen calling from the Central Coast of Australia, where it's been tipping it down with rain for the past three days. Um, I'm just calling with a question about Fawkes. What do you reckon his role will be in the seventh book? Um, I've heard a lot of theories about, like, maybe he's Godric Gryffindor's pet, or um, and all the things connected with Voldemort and Harry's wand and things like that. So I'd be interested to hear what you think. Anyway, bye! I think that Fox is going to peck Voldemort's eyes out, like he did the basilisk. Yeah. And that's just going to be the end. <laughs> yeah. He, he clearly... <clears throat> but don't you think that um, the battle at the end of book six, sorry, book five in the ministry, I thought showed two things spe- specifically, that in a duel, Voldemort would defeat Dumbledore, because if Fawkes hadn't been there, that spell would have hit Dumbledore. Yeah? Yeah. And killed him. Mm. So, unless, you know, you can when did, you when did, Fawkes When did Fox save yeah, Dumbledore in the ministry? The... It's when... It, when he swallowed the um, Vida Cadaver spell, and then it, uh, and then it created him again because he doesn't die, you know. So first of all, it showed that that because of Dumbledore's, you know, advanced age and everything, Voldemort yeah, would defeat then, him. But Jamie, if if Voldemort can defeat Dumbledore, then I think your Dumbledore Norris comparisons are pretty much over. No, no, because <laughs> no, because in terms of wizarding stuff, yes. But if um, Dumbledore but, in his prime would spank what? Voldemort. Yeah, mm-hmm. he'd spank. Anyway, and if Chuck, Chomp. if Chuck spank. Norris and Dumbledore went after Voldemort, he just he just he'd run and try and find all of his Horcruxes so he could die quickly and save some pain. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> both of them together would be would be a. Uh... Anyway, so the second thing that uh, it proved, I thought, was that um, how powerful Fox is, because if he can, you know, swallow sort of the most powerful spell, one of the most powerful spells. And just turn it into a baby again, even though you know he he normally dies and turns into a baby. But if he can just take that spell like it's absolutely nothing and just come back again, I think it proves how powerful he is. And he clearly is an extremely powerful bird, because you know, just like in the Chamber of Secrets when he uh, dragged them all to the surface. And uh, yeah, but I is think that he's anything? Play a big role. I mean, what about do you the think Phoenix he's song? Go to do you guys have any idea what the Phoenix song? We, we kept hearing it in book six, yeah. didn't we? It uh, yeah. inspires uh, inspires courage in the hearts of the true, and inspires fear in the hearts of the bad-minded. Or you know, I well, maybe we can maybe that'll play a role again. You know, just because <laughs> well, he'll start singing and Voldemort will cry. And yeah, yeah, Voldemort will just he'll crumble. Right, and he'll right, peck right his there. eyes out, and then he'll. But bring do you down think Godric's he's soul? now Harry's pet now? Yeah, Harry's I think because so. he clearly yeah. was extremely fond of Harry. Yeah, you know, like he stroked him and everything, and he. Uh, that would be awesome if he was well, Harry's pet. I think it would make sense for Dumbledore to leave him to Harry. Yeah, in his uh, will. Does Does Dumbledore have a will? Probably. <laughs> well, if he's planning his death, he I think he planned his death, yeah. so he certainly did have a will. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. That he wouldn't die unprepared. Everyone's sending in the top ten <laughs> items on Dumbledore's will. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> Andrew and Staff, subject Dumbledore's will, and uh, I'll read them in. Never do anything with them. So apart from read them, which is pretty important. Yeah, read by me. 
the yeah. ultimate uh, thing. The ultimate compliment. What do you bet one of the things on that list is going to be pickles? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, the pickle graze is picking up. That's all the voicemails we got for everyone this week. Um, and we're almost on the show here. Quick dating service update. Uh, we got a lot of applicants, but they're too many, and it's so confusing. Everyone's all over the map with what they're asking for and stuff. Send a new dating service request um, in the subject. Put your name, city, and state. No, and what you're no, looking Andrew, for, guy what? or girl. And H. All on the subject. All on the subject in that order that I just said. When Rewind you it. say that, when you say that people are all over the place with what they want, are you saying they should lower their expectations? <laughs> no, no. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying, like people like asking for like different. I don't, it's just confusing. All the emails that I have. That's all I'm saying. It's not very organized. I have a hard time sort, sorting it through. It isn't a real thing, <laughs> huh? It isn't a real thing. That's no, this is for no, this is for real. <laughs> and I tried okay, to Andrew, get a couple together. How many together. couples have? Uh, how many couples have got? Together, Jamie, to Michael Caster. Jamie, <laughs> they deserve was Rome built in a day? Yes, it was. No, it's a it lie. Wasn't. Dumbledore and Chuck Norris are banded <laughs> together and are built it in no, a half a day. No, we're actually. serious about this dating service thing. There's a free dinner in it for you if you if if uh, you send in your emails and you know we find good matches. They have to live near each other, and I have to do background checks on these people. I can't hook people up with oh, pedophiles. Yeah. How would I feel? Well, 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 Andrew's dad has the government connection. He looked <laughs> us all up. Yeah. Just remember that he told us that. Yeah. <laughs> he really didn't, though. Um, so, right. MuggleCast at Saf.MuggleNet.com. Dating service. Rewind to hear the order that I said in the subject line, because I'm too lazy to try to remember it. And that's that. I'd like to announce the winner of uh, the Candle in the Wind parody. comes from Cameron Smith. And I'll post it on the website. I'll give you a little preview of the first verse here. Jamie, would you like to join me in song? Uh, no. Please. Goodbye, Dumbledore. I didn't Though know I it, Ben, so... Knew you at <laughs> all. I join you, you had the skill to apparate. You will? No, 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 no. Just sing it, just sing it. While those around you crawled, you crawled oh, yeah, you into the skating. ministry, and they whispered into Fudge's brain, they removed you from the wise and gamut. Because they thought that you were insane. And it seems to me you live your life like a phoenix in the wind. <laughs> Never knowing Snape would betray you when you let him in. And you probably should have killed Tom when he was just a kid. <laughs> the phoenix burned out long before the legend ever did. That was did. quite good. Well, that's <laughs> a beautiful yeah, that's rendition. Good. Andrew, Andrew, so, I've just worked out why Ben did this competition. It was just so, so he could sing, sing Elton yeah. John on the, uh, yeah, pretty on much. the uh, show. <laughs> oh, an important note, episode 57, we're going to re- be recording earlier in the week. Um, so it's going to be a little, it, the show might be a little different, probably not listener rebuttals, because um, this episode 57 is going to be the last show <clears throat> before California. Ever. <laughs> yeah, ever. Yeah. Live, before our live podcast, and... Um, we're all we're all moving around. I'm gonna be in England with Jamie drinking tea. Yeah. Ben's Easy gonna be this. in uh, Notre Dame with Emerson drinking. <laughs> well, we'll leave your mind open to that. And, um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> orange juice. Orange juice. Anyway, contact information. You PO can, box. Yep. Go for it. PO box two two three, Mount Ridge, Kansas six seven one zero seven. You can also call us in the United States dial one two one eight twenty magic, and in the United Kingdom dial zero two zero eight one double four zero six double seven, and if in Australia dial zero two eight double three five double six eight. If you have a question that you want us to answer on the show, you have to call it in. We always get questions uh, via email, email, but we can't answer them. We like the voicemails. This is a sound show. We don't like reading all the emails, so. Um, one more, one more thing. And also, hold on. Skype the username MuggleCast too. That's another way of calling if you don't want to dial the number. Just add MuggleCast to your Skype list. Keep your message under thirty seconds. Listen to my awesome voicemail where I say pickle at the end. And, Are you um, kidding me? Did you actually edit email that feedback say forum MuggleCast? I didn't yeah. edit. I just recorded <laughs> earlier today. <laughs> um, another thing. Uh, happy birthday to my dear friend Savannah. She's a good Harry Potter fan. She listened to the show. I met her in Las Vegas. So, yeah. Happy birthday. Here come all the birthday requests. I know, but I had to do this one. <laughs> Fudge Sickle. Fudge Sickle? It's just like Pickle, dude. It's a new thing. No. Ew, no. Fudge Sickle. No. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Fudge Sickle. Fudge Sickle. Oh, no. No. Pickle? That's so... Yeah, that's, that's, so that's going overboard. <laughs> we 
leave, leave, leave it in, though. Yeah, leave that in. Yeah, okay. Seriously, though, in, in California, we want to see everyone with their pickles and everyone with their, you know, Muggle Cast merchandise and all that. So, anyway, um, that wraps up the show. Once again, once again I'm Andrew Sims. I'm Ben Chang. <laughs> I'm Ben Chang. Mark Thompson. Yeah. And who knows? Wow, that was, that was quick. <laughs> Didn't even hear it. <laughs> uh, don't, uh, so, I said it, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> There's also don't forget our Frapper map. I love we love looking at pictures no, of you. And seriously, what's Andrew, Andrew, everyone go on a Frapper map. What's Andrew gonna say now, Ben? Fine, Ben. Fine. What's Andrew gonna say now? I wanted I wanted to be. I, what's Andrew gonna say now? You're all a bunch of really good-looking people. So you know, dudes, send your photos. You're an attractive bunch. I want to see <laughs> yes, your sorry, pictures. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, seriously, it's it's fun looking at that. <laughs> okay, that just sounds weird. So anyway, <laughs> uh. join our Facebook group, um, and we have a MuggleCast MySpace coming very, very, very soon. And by very, very, very soon, I mean never soon. And by soon, I mean I don't really know. And by soon, we mean <laughs> when the guy finally gives it to us. <laughs> yeah, well, he ran into a problem with it. That's why there's been a holdup. Um. So that's it. We'll see everyone next week for episode 57. 50, yeah, 57. He's lost count. Hi, it's Howard in England. I'm just calling to say that uh, the debate that you had at the beginning, I thought Ben and Jamie were right, but I've got to say that Laura and Eric, they covered it. They're really good. Great debate. Well done. They stayed on topic, stayed on point. So I'm agreeing with them now. Good job. Hi, this is Jillian from New Jersey, and I just wanted to say that people say the people from Jersey talk fast, but Jamie, you beat us all. I love the show. Keep it up. Bye. Hey, Mugglecast. This is Sonia. I'm 15 from the UK, and I just wanted to say that I really, really love your show. It's like pilot of my week. I listen to it every week, and it's all great. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to say thanks for being so great and cheering me up when I'm upset and everything. So, thank you. Bye. Hi. Um, this is Paul from Damascus. I was just wondering um, how to get a, like, a web link on the MuggleCast dating service, because it's really hard to find, you know, someone that likes Harry Potter around here, and just trying to try and hook up, you know? Well, thanks. Uh, bye. As an added bonus this week, we have a special song made by David C. of Reading, Pennsylvania. He took clips from last week's episode, episode 56, the show how musical we were enjoy bum, what's bug in mica what's bug in mica what what what's bug in mica what's bug in mica i've got a peaceful what what's bug in mica dumbledore was whomping the gargoyle what's bug in mica Back to school edition. What's bug in my What's bug in my what? Bump. What? What's bug in my cat? Bump. 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 <laughs> oh yeah, because a hat must take up so much room, Ben. No, it takes up a lot more room than you think. Hat. When you're going to be gone <laughs> ben, forever, <laughs> okay, Ben, will you it need it to have <laughs> plenty of space for your clothes, okay, Jamie? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, well, Ben, you wouldn't do that because you you wore the the same shirt for the, the entire two weeks. No, <laughs> <laughs> in your so. Oh, is this your that your clothes... joke when I'm not around that you continually? <laughs> no, I've never heard that. No, it's the first <laughs> time I've said it since I said it in, in Vegas. You paranoid. Uh,
No, I know, I know. Ben's like, dude, 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 you're talking about me buying my bag, man. Dude, dude, yeah. dude. No, I know you do. I know how you operate, Jamie. I know how you operate. Okay, Ben. Okay, Ben, don't even think about going there. You made fun of my it... shorts. You made fun of my shorts. <laughs> what you about this after the show? The shorts that I wore every day. Because just because there's a lot of pictures of me with those shorts on doesn't mean I wore them every day. <laughs> you did, though. You did. Those pictures were every day. I didn't. You did wear them every day. Those pictures were not every day, though. Those red. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep red. going. Andrew, this is funny stuff. Put this stuff in. People will like it. <laughs> this is just weird. Dumbledore hexed, but the guy. Oh, that's terrible! I can't do that. <laughs> I just got that suddenly. Say it's it, listen. Andrew. Edit it out. I want to hear it. Say it. Okay, Dumbledore hexed. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that first of all. <laughs> that is that is ridiculous. <laughs> I didn't get. Oh my god, that's terrible. <laughs> 